Hello, it's Tuesday, August 29th, and you're listening to Wing Radio. I'm Lisa Giuliani, and I've given Victor Thorne the day off. Today, I am so thrilled to have a very special person. I had to get a really hard, heavy hitter today for this show. We are going to be talking about evil, the study and science of evil. Uh, the book that I want to introduce you to officially is Political Ponderology by Arthur M. Lovachevsky. I hope I didn't slaughter that name. And um, my special guest is Laura Knight Yadchik. And she has a website, one website. Actually, she has four. But one of them is signsofthetimes.org. And I would like to welcome Laura. And uh, first, let me just tell you a little bit about Laura. Laura has spent 30 years studying psychology, history, culture, religion, myth, and the paranormal. She worked for several years in hypnotherapy, and she has a deep working knowledge of how the human mind and brain operate. She's an historian. She's an author of several books. The first, Amazing Grace, which is an autobiography. The second, called 9-11, The Ultimate Truth, which is an unveiling of the real reasons behind 9-11. The third, The High Strangeness of Dimensions, Densities, and the Process of Alien Abduction, which gets into the, the differences between alien abductions and uh, mind control and how to distinguish between the two. The fourth is called a four-volume series called The Wave. And then this massive volume, I believe it's 867 pages, right, Laura? The Secret History of the World and How to Get Out Alive. Yeah. It's a radical reassessment of history, science, religion, and myth. It's the result of her search to uncover the underlying principles of reality. And I'll tell you, it, these are... This book is beautiful. She sent it to me, and, um, and I haven't even been able to tackle it yet because I've been going through the Ponderology book we're going to talk about today. She's also a co-founder, along with her husband, Arcadius Yadchik, who I believe is a quantum physicist, correct? Yes. Um, He's a mathematical, theoretical physicist. Yeah, and, uh, you know, normal people, or everyday people call him a, a genius. But anyway, um, they have four websites, Cassiopeia.org, Quantum Future Physics, Signs of the Times, and QFG Publishing. And you can, I guess, find links to those on the Signs of the Times website, which we have linked to on Wing TV. Laura and Ark have also founded Quantum Future Group, Inc., which is a nonprofit in California which supports alternative and scientific research. They sit on the boards of several successful companies around the world, which are based on the principles of networking which they espouse in their work. And I'll tell you, I'm so glad I met this woman because we all think that we are aware and awake and enlightened in these conspiracy, political conspiracy circles and in the 9-11 truth movement and in the patriot community. And until you read this book, Political Ponderology, and talk to the people who have studied this, you realize that you don't know anything. So I'd like to welcome Laura knight Yatchik to Wing TV. Hi, Laura. Well, thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Gee, that's, uh, that's a hard act to follow. I don't know what to say. Oh, you, I've never seen an instance where you don't know what to say. I fall into that trap much more. Now, Laura, we talk a lot about people are always asking, what can we do? And saying that we need to strike the root of what's going on in the world politically and within you know, the whole 9-11 truth effort and in the patriot community, what's going on in America. Are we striking the root, or are we more or less hacking at the leaves? Because your husband, Ark, came up with a really good uh, thing, or way to describe this, that we need to go after the element that birthed the problem. And the element that birthed the problem is, is the, the problem's evil. And we, we don't really hear anybody talking about evil or, or studying it, or addressing it in any way, and also psychopaths, right? That's by design, of course, because uh, at, at the root of evil, and, and evil is something that I have studied uh, for probably the last 30 years, because, you know, my initial question was, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? If God is a good God, you know, why is the world the way it is? You know, the usual... Uh, uh, existential questions that many seekers of answers ask and uh, you know most of them get diverted right away uh, by the by the system itself which posits that at the at the earliest layers of inquiry that if you ask questions about these things that uh, you will become
become part of it, that if you look at it too long, it'll look back at you and take over you. But, you know, if you just think in more mundane terms, one of the first rules of, of warfare, and it is, it is a war, is know your enemy. Uh, how can you know what you're fighting against if you don't know every detail about it and how to combat it? So, you know, right away they have put a fence around the study of this by saying, if you think about it, if you ask about it, if you concentrate on it even, you know, then it'll become real. And, and that is absolutely not the case because, you know, for, for all the years that those ideas have been promoted that you know, not to think or talk or inquire about evil, it has done nothing but grow and grow and grow. And there's, you know, there's, of course, the, the old saying that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Right. which was attributed to Edmund Burke, uh, an Irish an Irishman who was a member of the uh, British Parliament. Uh, but th- th- the point is is that what he was saying was absolutely true, and you can do nothing about it if you don't understand it, if you don't know what it is. And most people think it's, you know, they ascribe it to some esoteric thing that you can think away. And uh, Andrew Lobachevsky has made it quite clear that evil, as we experience it and understand it in our world, is not necessarily some esoteric or ephemeral force of, of, you know, something like demons or witches, etc. That it actually erupts into our reality from very prosaic and uh, causes that can be understood if if it is approached in the proper way. You know, the way of a naturalist who is seeking to study something that is a natural part of our reality. Uh, that evil erupts into our world from a psychological deviance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and psychological deviance can be both uh, uh, acquired uh, and it can also be inherited. There can be genetic psychological deviance, and there are, and they're called psychopaths in our society. Right. Now, the, we, know, we know mostly we see pictured on TV and in film and whatnot the violent psychopaths, people as you used an example, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. Those are the ones portrayed in film that the public gets to see. But there is a larger group of psychopaths, the nonviolent psychopaths. That's my understanding, right? Am I that's, right? That's <laughs> actually correct. And that's, that's, one of the, that's another one of the offenses that has mm-hmm. been put around the study, the, the confusion of the issue. And it's been done deliberately. Uh, the idea of psychopathy as being the you know, the barely restrained maniac, uh, and he's not really barely restrained because he, he comes unleashed every once in a while, you know, uh, Hannibal Lecter, and then there are, uh, you know, things like Psycho, you know, the guy with the with the shower scene, uh-huh. and various other things. But these, these types, what, what are called the criminal types, are really failures. They are psychopathic failures because they, they fail because they have, Broken their cover. They have uh, They've been busted, right? They have been captured. They have been uh, submitted to study, and, and this is another problem because most of the earlier studies of psychopathy were, in fact, those who had been failures. They were captured. They 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 broke the law. They did something so violent, so reprehensible that they were apprehended. So the non, you know, the, but the, the non-violent type were about the violent type. Uh huh. Then Hervey Cleckley came along and wrote his seminal work, The Mask of Sanity, which is out of print, by the way, and, and we contacted the company uh, about, uh, you know, getting getting some new, uh, getting a new publication or a new edition, and it is pretty well established that there is no intention ever to republish this work, so what copies are available are pretty much all there, all there is. Wow. So, uh, but anyhow, his study dealt with another layer of psychopaths, which was mostly subcriminal. They they just committed petty crimes or whatever. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, they they were just put in hospitals by their families or their friends or or uh, you know under circumstances that were quite different from someone who had committed a violent crime. So he had a whole other level of uh, psychopaths to examine, study, and work with. So he wrote his book with you know. Ex- extremely detailed case histories that were taken not just in the psychopath because of course you can't take a a case history from a psychopath because one of the chief characteristics of a psychopath is the fact that they you know they lie right so he took these case histories he would get their version of everything then he would interview all their family members everyone who had ever known them their victims etc etc and come up with a more complete picture of who and what this this type of individual was in more
more recent times, uh, there have been other books. For example, uh, Martha Stout, who wrote um, The Sociopath Next Door, and, and I'm going to try to avoid the, the controversy over whether the word sociopath or psychopath is the appropriate one. I would say psychopath is the appropriate word, and sociopath is just part of the confusion process. But Martha Stout worked with the victims of psychopaths, and these were the people who had been... Uh, you know, in relationships with them and who had been impacted in their lives by the sub-criminal psychopaths, that is, psychopaths who never did anything illegal mm-hmm. that, that for which they were caught. Now, you can't say that they never did anything illegal because right. they, they constantly do things, and they do things that are terribly immoral.